When Motion VFX created M Logo Cinematic, we knew it was special. And today is just as special. Introducing M Logo Cinematic 2 a brand new logo pack designed to make your logos as cinematic as possible right inside of Final Cut Pro. This pack comes with 30 unique presets that are simple to use, drag and drop, and guaranteed to impress you and your clients. And I'm gonna show you a few of them right now, so on to the tutorial. Once you've installed MLogo Cinematic 2 via M Installer, it can be located in your titles. As we mentioned in our intro, there are 30 presets for MLogo Cinematic 2. If you'd like to get a real-time preview, you can simply take your cursor and scrub over so that you can see how that is going to look before you apply it. To apply MLogo Cinematic 2, you can simply click and drag above your clip, or if you would like to add this without any footage, you can add it separately. For this first example, I am going to use this above my clip here. Now, as you can see in my footage, I have these really pretty lines. MLogo Cinematic 2 number 21 is going to go really well with this scene. So as I push forward, you can see we've got some bars and lines coming in, and then that is where our logo is just going to pop in there in the center. So first, why don't we go ahead and populate our drop zone with our logo. To do this, over in your inspector, find your drop zone, click in your drop zone, and then find the logo that you want to use. In this example, we're going to use this scuba co. So click to select, and then click apply clip, and you can now see that that's been updated on our canvas. You can see we are immediately presented with on-screen controls for position, scale and rotation. Over in our inspector, we have animations in and out, and then we have all of our position, rotation, scale, opacity parameters. Below, we then have our logo. So if we needed to pan this logo left and right, we do so here. We have our logo inside scale. So this is scaling up until the point that our mask for our drop zone is then presented. So if we wanted to make that a rectangle, for example, we could scale that up and then bring our logo scale back down. We have logo colorize. We will come back to that in just a second. And then if you want to make changes to your lines for width and height, and then all of the colors, you can do so here, as well as our streak, flare, flare hue, our noise, etc. There's really a lot built into all of these. Now, because we are using footage that really lends itself to this animation well, I'd like to actually see my background a bit. To do this over in background, you can either toggle on and off, or we can select our background opacity here. I'm just going to bring that down a good bit. So now we can see a bit of our background, but we're still getting that overlay. So now as I look at this, I notice that my logo and the color of the scene aren't exactly matching. So I'd like to colorize my logo a bit. I'm going to select my logo colorize, and then I'm going to open up my colorize black, and I will use my eyedropper tool to just select some of the color from our scene and now my logo is colorized and it matches much better to the overall video. I'd also like to colorize my line colors so that they are a bit better matching. I already like this color here, so I'm going to pick this up and just drag it into my top color. Then I'll open up and let's go ahead and select some additional colors in our scene. And I really like this color. I think that it goes well with these blues, so we're going to keep that. And now why don't we take a look at how our logo looks with these changes. All right, that looks really beautiful. For our next example, we are going to go ahead and use logo cinematic number one. I'm going to select it and tap E to set it to the end of my timeline. And we're just going to use this as a standalone, so we're not using any footage beneath. 
So again, we just want to populate our drop zone. So over in our inspector, we will select our drop zone. Let's go ahead and find the logo that we would like to use and click apply clip. You can now see that that is updated in our canvas. Once again, we are presented with on-screen controls for position, scale, and rotation, and you have the parameters over in your inspector as well. We have our logo colorized, just the same. And in this one, we have a camera shake, so there's a bit of animation going on. You can toggle these on and off. We also have multiple flares within this preset that we can toggle on and off as well. Or we can make adjustments accordingly with saturation, hue, value, offset, etc. We have a prism color and all of the adjustable parameters beneath. And then if we would like to colorize any of these, we have these below as well. You'll also notice that all of these have a noise option. Now, the noise is really important if you are dealing with any sort of color banding happening on your exports. Noise is going to help alleviate that. So you have the adjustable noise parameters as well. Just be aware that you may get a bit of banding. The best way to get rid of that is either by using your noise or exporting with a high bit rate. So remember in our previous example, we spoke about our background that we can toggle on and off. Of course, there is going to be no background here, but if we wanted to add a bit of color, you can do so with your background color. So let's say that we wanted the color to be somewhat in line with the rest of the plugin. We can use our eyedropper here, select this blue, come on down and then we can bring that color way way down just so that there's a bit of a hint of the blue there because we don't need a lot all right let's see how this looks that looked really really good all right we are going to use one more example so why don't we just go in and i really love the cinematic look of number four with this cube here I'm going to again select it and tap E and I wanted to show you that you don't only have to use logos even though it is called M logo cinematic you can use text as well so I'm going to click Control T just to create a text layer here so we have our basic title here at the end and we're just going to call this video company let's find a good font all right, and now that we have that looking how we want, we can come back to our M logo cinematic title number four, and we're going to populate our drop zone with our text. Let's click apply clip. Now that we've done that, if we wanted to delete this text, we could, but we'll just leave it there for now. And you can see that our text is coming inside of our drop zone. Now it is quite small. Of course, you can use your on-screen controls, but when you do this, this is a global scale. So you're going to scale absolutely everything up. You might not wanna do that. You might want your cube to stay relatively small and your text to be a bit bigger. So to do this, you will go over into your inspector and in your logo inside scale, this is where we are going to scale this up accordingly. And now you can see that that is a bit bigger. I'd like to bring it up just a bit more and then we can see how this looks inside of our square. Really cool. I love that one so much. It is so much fun. Over in our inspector, we can do a logo colorize if we would like. We have our logo distortion that you can toggle on and off. I personally like the distortion of the cube, so we're going to leave that on. And then we have our logo prism that we can make adjustments on the inside of that prism that is happening over our logo or our text there. We have our cube scale, so you can scale that independently if you would like. And we have many additional parameters beneath. 
And that about does it. Thank you again for checking out this quick tutorial on M Logo Cinematic 2. It is now available on motionvfx.com. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.